Good morning, Delaware County. This is not Nicole Fowles. This is Jana McDaniel Browning, and I am joining you today with the co hostess with the mostest, <laughs> Molly Myers Lapati. Do you have your bingo cards out? Because I bet you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Just when you think we're both going to be here, one of us disappears. <laughs> Good morning, Delaware County. And I can't wait to tell them who our guest is today. I know. Go, go okay. ahead, Molly. Our you guest do it. today is from the Orange Branch, Cindy Bardash, who is running an amazing program that we're going to talk about a lot in the second half. Thanks for coming and being here this morning, Cindy. Thank you guys for having me. I love talking about my program. I know. So. She's working with veterans programs, so we're gearing up for the veterans holiday. So, Mm -hmm. Cindy, I can't wait for us to tell them more about this, but we're going to, you know, draw that out a little bit, aren't we, Jaina? We we are, and keep you on your toes. It's online, you know. Mm -hmm. I I will say it's the Delaware County Veterans History Project. Mm -hmm. It's been going for a few years. We are so excited to talk all about it. We don't want to give any spoilers yet. You got to come back. Yep, exactly. And speaking of which, to everybody listening who has served in our military, we are very grateful thank for you. your service. Thank yes, you. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, before we go there, though, it's book time, it's right? It's book time. Book time. It's book time. Molly, what have you <laughs> been reading? Tell us. Okay. So I am really excited about this one. I had a friend suggest it to me, and it's been on that to-read list for a long time. It's Wool, which is the first book in the Silo series. So um, I know when you all hear me talk, I read everything. Um, it's normally a romance or a cozy mystery or some other. Those cozy this mysteries. time I'm taking you dystopian <laughs> fiction. And it's so good. It is so good. So this story starts and we start with the sheriff and really the sheriff's wife. She has discovered something in the archives. Now, they're living, you're trying to figure it out in the beginning, and and you may notice how carefully I'm trying to pick my words here. I don't (laughs) want to spoil anything. But they tend to be living on several floors, is what you understand. And they keep talking about people going out to clean. As the story progresses, just in the first couple chapters, you start to learn that cleaning means somebody goes out with a piece of wool, which is the name of the book, wool, and they scrub the video lens so they can see outside. But as soon as that person gets out there, they die. So it's a punishment for some reason. When people are sent out for some evil thing they've done, they always turn around and clean the lens. Nobody knows why they always turn around and clean the lens. Well, the sheriff's wife discovers something and ends up being accused of something. Uh, Notice how careful I am here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She goes out to clean. Well, it drives the sheriff almost crazy losing her. And he just wants to know what's out there. And he, he knows enough to know she was on to something. So he ends out going or ends up going out to clean. So both of these people you're really invested in and you think this is their story? No, it's not. You have three or four starts where they just keep killing people who you were really, really invested into. But as it keeps going on, you start to learn about life in the silo. All of the floors going up and down the stairs, how they eat, how they survive, and how they're alone in the world. Well, maybe. And that's where I'm going to leave you. Well, well, you, you know maybe. what? I will say Wool is one of my favorite series of all time. I have read it through multiple times. I'm impressed. And, and an interesting thing that you may not know about this series, since you are just yes. coming to it, Hugh Howey, the author, had self-published those initially. So the first seriously Wool number one was really more of a short story, which I'm sure you noticed. Yes. Um, he self-published, I believe, through Amazon. And uh, and then the second one is a little bit longer. The third is yeah. really a novella. So they get longer as they go. And then uh, after you finish Wool, there are other series, Sand and Silo, um, that will take you wait. deeper into the universe, either after Wool or before Wool in, in one case. I so. mean, it's one of those books where you think half of the group is corrupt. You think half of them are mm-hmm. really doing the right thing. And then you start being like, but this is really messed up. And what would I do in that position? And... It's one of those series that just kind of keeps you spinning, and you think you've hit the big surprise. Boom, here comes another big surprise. Yeah, yeah. It's just not, then you think you figured out what's going on, and then you didn't figure out what was going on. 
It is just phenomenal. You're going to love this, but it's really like pulling yarn out of a ball of Ooh. wool. <laughs> there goes my knitting. And this is it. This is it. It is. This is Jaina. This is why we're I meant know. to be here. I know. <laughs> Now I wish you brought my yarn to knit while we talked. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, Cindy, what have you been reading? Yes. My current book is um, Five Days in November. It's by Ooh. Clint Hill. Um, it was published 10 years ago and reissued this year. And Clint Hill is the Secret Service agent mm-hmm. that jumped on the back of uh, JFK's car during yes. the assassination. Oh, yes. Um, He's still living. He's 91 years old. Amazing. um, And can still tell you stories like anybody's story. Um, But anyway, he goes through the five days of getting to Texas, leaving leaving D.C. with Kennedy's, getting to Texas, what happens, um, being at the hospital, and then coming back home for the funeral. So it's five days. Wow. And he tells you um, his whole story. He was actually the Secret Service agent for Jackie Kennedy. Mm-hmm. but was with okay. the whole Kennedy entourage all the time. Um, and his stories are just fantastic. But, you know, in two weeks, it's the 60th anniversary of JFK's yes. assassination. Mm-hmm. So it kind of, um, I enjoy reading it because it brings me back and kind of mm-hmm. puts me to, you know, where we're going to be then, who's going to think about it, who's going to not know anything about it. Who won't. Yes. And right. Lots of people don't even know about it. No. Um, so it's really good. You know, that really makes me think, too, about, it's Veterans Day. Ask people. Ask the people in your life who were there. I remember asking my parents. They were in college. My, my dad didn't remember. But my mom remembered being at her desk studying and somebody came in to tell her. Like, uh, ask yeah. those questions yeah. because, you know, each of our lives are filled with these pieces of history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to know where people were, their stories may be really amazing to you. Yeah. 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 That's a really yeah. good point. Yeah. He has four mm-hmm. other books out, too. All of them are excellent, but um, yeah. this one particularly. This yeah. is his story. This it really is his, is story. his story. But mm-hmm. he also served five presidents. There's a book about that, too. Oh, wow. Eisenhower and Ford, he served all of those. So um, just and what the a fact great he man. could keep going, too. Mm-hmm. That absolutely. takes some courage. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Fantastic. Jaina, why don't you tell us about your latest read? Um, Watch, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I'm so glad that you talked about Wool, um, because Hugh Howey really is one of my oh. favorite authors. What I've been reading, or what I just finished recently, is by another of my favorite authors. Who? That is John Scalzi. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. And I'll <laughs> yes. bet you know him from Red Shirts, if I'm, if uh-huh. I'm thinking oh, I've correctly. Read Red, I've read a few of his now, okay, but right. Red Shirts is classic. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> this is when the nerds come out. So it does. Right into the I'm, nerds. I'm in your club. <laughs> you the, are. The other well, great thing, Scal- Scalzi is an Ohio author. So I he's, didn't realize that. He is. He lives in Ohio. Because um, Ohio rocks. It, yes. Yes. And uh, and he actually bought a church about a year and a half or two years ago to renovate and turn into like living quarters and stuff. Wow. So yeah, small town Ohio. Yeah. So another cool thing. Um, <laughs> but yes, it, this is a brand spanking new novel by John Scalzi. It's called Starter Villain. Um, <laughs> and it has what a one title. Of, it has one of the best covers I have ever seen. <laughs> it's like this, you know, it's like a business portrait you've got somebody in this you know very bespoke suit uh-huh. and it's a cat head i mean it's literally like a furry <laughs> live cat it, oh, <laughs> and there's a reason for it i don't want to spoil everything i'm not gonna lie the first thing i think is that cats could truly be the best evil villains i know <laughs> and couldn't they <laughs> yes but, but um but you may know him from some of his other books he's like i said red shirts that was a spoof oh. on star trek and a brilliant one and that's about brilliant. the red shirts who always die you know why yes. are they, why is it always the red shirts if you are not on the command crew do not go down to the exactly. planet and a red shirt. Ne- never go on an away <laughs> mission. Um, the Old Man's War series was really, yes. really good. Last year, he did Kaiju Preservation Society. Oh, if you yes. haven't read that, that's amazing. So much fun. I think that was one of Lloyd's favorites. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. and it won the Locus Award last yeah. year, and it was well-deserved. Um, but anyway, Starter Villain. So, <laughs> so the hero of Starter Villain is Charlie, and he's this nice, average guy. He's had a string of really, really bad things happen in his life. So he he's divorced. He was laid off from his job. 
Um, he's moving back to his small hometown to care for his critically ill father, um, who has just recently passed. Mm-hmm. So he's living in his dad's house and part-time substitute teaching yes, just to make ends meet. His siblings really want to get him out of the house so they can sell it. So they're like leaning on him. So the siblings are not very nice. Um, and then Charlie learns that his uncle Jake who he has not spoken to in years. When his mom died, his dad and Uncle Jake had a fight, and he's not heard from Uncle Jake since. Oh, what is Um, Uncle Jake So it's been decades. Um, Well, Uncle Jake passes away, and Mm -hmm. he asks for Charlie to stand at his memorial service for Mm -hmm. him. So, you know, one of Uncle Jake's people comes and makes this request and says, if you will do this, we will give you, you know, this amount of money and this and this and this. Huh. Because Uncle Jake was like multimillionaire. Like wow. Tons of money. So Charlie says, okay, he can't turn that down. He goes. And the funeral starts with a room full of suspiciously large, muscular men in black suits. And the funeral ends with somebody trying to stab the corpse to make sure that he's actually dead. <laughs> well, I mean, I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> and, which leads to Charlie learning that his uncle was really literally something of a Bond villain. <laughs> and there is this society of villains. Um, so he finds himself working with uh, sentient cat agents. Yes, as yes, makes sense. It does with mm-hmm. the, the, the cover. Um, visiting his uncle's literal volcano lair. Oh, man. <laughs> I want one of those so bad. And dodging assassination attempts, attempts yes. from the other villains. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's a fast read. It's a ton of fun. I'm not going to ruin anything else, but it's it's a lot of fun. Just pick up this book. Okay. Enjoy it. If you're looking for something light to read over the holidays, this is it. Adding it to my well, list. This is it. It's action-packed. It's a lot of fun. Well, thank you. I think we're going to head to some uh, commercials, but when we come back, Cindy Bardash is going to tell us all about the Veterans Project. Yay! Welcome back, everybody. This is Jana McDaniel-Browning filling in for Nicole, who's taking a little break today, along with Molly myers Labady. Always happy to be here. Always so glad to be here with you. (laughs) Um, We are joined today by Cindy Bardash of Orange Branch Library, and we are so excited to hear all about the Veterans Project yes. that, that you are spearheading. You are the you are the brains behind the oh. project, and we are so thrilled that you are here. So tell well, us a little bit about it. What me. is and it? Of course, thanks to all the veterans. Also. Yes, absolutely. Um, this started several years ago, four or five years ago, maybe. Um, I attended a conference and went to a class on um, making your veterans known, mm-hmm. and just fell in love with this whole guy's story and how he handled everything. He kind of became my mentor. And so I just started researching and researching. And my goal, um, which still is, is to get every veteran in Delaware County into the same database um, with just a little bio. Um, And it doesn't matter if they're here now or they're deceased. It's if they were born, lived, died, had something to do with Delaware County, I include them in our project. That's amazing. I love this ending. Yeah. And I just want everybody to be able to look back at something and say, look at all these people. Yes. Who were here. Look at all the veterans that were buried in such and such a cemetery because you can sort um, on our website. You can sort by that. Um, and it's it's been a lot of fun and rewarding for me yes. to be able to do this. You've done a fantastic. You've put heart oh, and soul into this, you. Cindy. It's been amazing to watch this come to fruition. Well, thank you. We have a, over 500 now on our That's website. That's great. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. And Cindy, how would somebody who's, let's say they're, you know, I know I'm in the position where I've got all of my great uncle's information. Mm -hmm. What should somebody do that has all the information and wants to get their veteran onto your website? There's two options. When you're on the website, you can submit your information right there and it's Mm -hmm. submitted electronically to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will take it from there. If you say you want to be contacted, I'll contact you and we'll look for memorabilia and photos and everything else. Or you can come into the library and see me or you can email me, cbardash at delawarelibrary.org, and I'll get back to you and we'll put put it together. I love that. So it's super easy to do. Just pop on our website. Um, and go ahead and enter some information. What kind, you said memorabilia. What kind of memorabilia have you seen come through? Oh, my gosh. I had a guy <clears throat> who was with the Navy um, on a submarine, and he came in with the original 
huge submarine clock that was on wow. the submarine. Um, I put it locked in the display case. Um, it was. It didn't almost fit. It was just so large. That's amazing. And wow. he brought all of his medals, um, everything he'd been awarded, photos. Um, it was a great little compilation of everything that he had. So, yeah. Um, I love doing stuff like that because that also lets people, patrons who come in the building, yeah. know who, oh, your local veteran. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, a little bit about life. One of the things that I feel like I've been really lucky to do is on a couple vacations, if you get near a maritime museum, they often, I know in South Carolina, I was on one of the ones that the planes land on from World War II. I'm going to forget all the names of everything once again. Aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. But it was from <laughs> World War II. And to see how they lived, like the hammocks right on top of each mm -hmm. other. There's no space. There was no air conditioning. I mean, it was in South Carolina. We were broiling. Um, they also had a Vietnam experience. You see mm. it on TV. You've maybe watched MASH or seen a documentary, but they have recreated what it was like, the barracks. They've built buildings to walk into. And then when we went to, um, there was a maritime museum in Astoria, Oregon, and they had a different ship from the 70s. And to see how that evolved, it still wasn't super comfortable the bunks were still pretty small. You know, I had to learn what a Navy shower is, which is you turn the water on, you soap up, you turn the water on to rinse off, and you're done. Um, fascinating to see how different that was, their mm -hmm. experience, to get their stories. Oh, for sure. Um, There's a township resident that just passed away within the last year. His name's Larry McCauley, and he passed away at 100 years old. Wow. But his history, and it's on our website, he um, helped liberate Buchenwald. Wow. Um, he has so many stories to tell, and he was awarded the highest honor in France. Um, and he's, in his last years, publicized greatly. Everybody's oh, had it. him on their shows. He's been at the Blue Jackets game on the ice. Um, great guy. But stories like that are also fantastic, yeah. and I can just add as much to it as I can find, you know. It That's means we're great. keeping the stories of Delaware County. If you want to know a reason to be proud of the county, we can go and just look you at yes, this website mm -hmm. and find out all those things we have to hold pride for. Yeah. And anyone, card holder or not, can just go yes. out and peruse, oh, sure. right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you if you know someone whose family used to live here in Delaware County, and had a soldier while they were here, they can reach out too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 What a great project. It's a it great really project. I'm, I do say so myself. I just love sharing it with people and letting people know. And um, one of the most rewarding times I had was I had put a young uh, staff member's grandfather in the, pro uh -huh. in the program and put some pictures of him in the display case. And she brought grandpa in. Aww. And Grandpa just stood in front of that display case and then went and sat down and then asked to meet me and was tearful. Um, thank you so much for remembering us for, you know, yeah. and that's what it's all about, yeah. you know, yeah. is, is really just never forgetting your veterans. Yeah. yeah. And what impact it had, not just on, you know, having the story, but the families, the county, the community. Mm -hmm. I know and my family when I was little, I knew about great uncle Walter and he actually, um, his ship was sunk during friendly fire during world war oh, two. Yeah. And, um, as I got older hearing his story and the impact of losing mm -hmm. him. So the last letter he would have read the one last one he responded to is the day my mom was born. Oh. And you see in my grandmother, they have all the letters back and forth and the telegrams back and forth with Walter and then you see it just sort of stops and then the condolence cards. And there's such a family story in there yes, that, you know, it makes it less. The veterans are are over here and mm -hmm. I'm over here. It, it really brings that brings in. And together. it makes me yeah. think yeah. about veterans today in a whole different mm -hmm. light when I think about absolutely. how the, that story was told in my mm -hmm. family. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I well, still. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no please. Oh, I have on display in the Orange Branch if anybody would like to come in. Um, I'm honoring um, some of our veterans who are no longer here. I'm honoring an active service member now um, mm -hmm. who's in the Marines. And then even though my grandparents did not live in Delaware County, I do, but um, I'm honoring them. And they met uh, during World War II. Oh. She was an Army nurse. Um, he was a soldier, and he was injured. Um, and I have so much memorabilia from their um, story 
and one of the ones I have is a letter he wrote home on a on a map of the cemetery at Argonne and telling how many he'd buried that day. Wow. wow. Yeah. So it, it just has meaning to everybody who sees it, and I hope people just come around and get more interested. And Cindy, can you tell us how to get to that website again? You are on our website, yeah. Delaware County website, and you go to the services tab, and then you will see Delaware Veteran History. Mm-hmm. You click there. Um, the first option will give you um, the choice to search, mm-hmm. and you have keyword searches and everything you can look up. And then if you scroll down, you have the um, submission form. Fill it out at the bottom, submit, and it will come to me. Excellent. And, Jaina, I have a feeling we're going to have some love this um, weekend with uh, this on our our social medias and the such. Don't you think so? I, I do I think, think so. And as a matter of fact, you can uh, go out to our homepage, DelawareLibrary.org, yeah. and you will see right under our news section, the first thing is Veterans Day. Um, so if you click on that, you will you will get all the information on our Veterans History Project and also a reminder that we are closed, closed. at all yes. branches tomorrow in honor of our veterans. Yes. Um, so definitely come down to Orange Branch and check out what Cindy has there, but not tomorrow. No, come we'll see day. you today. We'll see you today. And Indeed. we'll see you on um, Tuesday at our larger branches or mm-hmm. Monday on our larger branches yep. and Tuesday in our smaller. Yep. We have just a couple minutes to talk about a few other things coming up. Mm-hmm. I think this is a great time to sort of do a little shout out. If you don't know and you're trying to find out if there's a veteran in your family, the Delaware Genealogical Society has mm-hmm. an amazing partnership with us. And I just want to shoot out, they are at our main branch And you can see them on Thursday, the 16th, between 9 and 4.30, and they'll help you do some family research if you're looking for it or any kind of historical research in the county. They're also going to be there Saturday, November 18th from 9 to 1. Just want to do a little shout out because that is a great way to get the information you may want to give to Cindy down the road. 100%. And also on the 18th, I have to give a shout out to our friends of the library. Yes. They are having a bargain book sale on Saturday, the 18th at Liberty Branch Library between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can get a bag full of good reading for the holidays. Absolutely. Christmas presents. Song. Christmas yes. presents. 100%. And they have some great looking books there. So Indeed. get in there. Well, I think that's the end of our show. It is. I think Sadly. I'm going to run out of time. Though yeah. Gage said he'd never uh, throw us out. Thanks again for being with us today, Gage. Gage, tell us no the problem. board. No <laughs> problem. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And we will see you in the library. <laughs>